Welcome to the SDG Global Festival of Action. Some of you are joining us inside this Zoom webinar and some are joining from the festival's event platform. Welcome all on behalf of the organizers and BMW Foundation who is hosting this session. Before we kick off, a bit of housekeeping has been provided by the UN SDG Action Campaign Team. Please note that this session is part of the whole festival. So if you are joining here directly in Zoom, we strongly encourage you to log into the event platform afterwards. You can then benefit from joining any of six stages and meeting with others in the connection zone. You can also check out up to 20 exhibits and the resource library. By joining this webinar, everyone on the panel consents to their image and audio being broadcast. For those of you joining via Zoom, we have the opportunity here to promote participants to be featured on the screen with their cameras and microphone on. If you do that, you automatically give your consent. Please note that we have strict broadcasting regulations. So if anybody is promoted to have their mix and camera on, no flags, logos, musics are permitted in the background. If the broadcasting regulations are broken, we will need to remove participants. Finally, please put your camera on if possible and stay muted until we call for participation. Thank you very much for your understanding. I see that more people have joined us in the meantime. A warm welcome. My name is Barbara Müller from BMW Foundation. Our foundation promotes responsible leadership and inspires leaders worldwide to contribute to peaceful, just and sustainable future. Through our activities, we aim to advance the SDGs of the United Nations 2030 agenda. It is our great privilege that to be one of the longtime supporters of this inspiring and powerful festival. And we do so primarily by encouraging members from our Responsible Leaders Network to share their knowledge and experiences here at the festival and thus help accelerating actions on the SDGs. I think that's what's really bringing us all together here. Today, we are very happy to have the responsible leader Liu Yan and Ying Ting Go from Singapore with us, who will guide us to apply the iceberg model to understand complex social problems. Liu Yan is an international experienced social entrepreneur, a system innovator, and a learning facilitator. facilitator. Currently, she serves as the program director of base of Pyramid Hub, BOP Hub in Singapore, and she led the joint initiative of social system innovation by BOP and National University of Singapore. This is a venture building and accelerating. This is a venture building and acceleration platform for learning. With us is also Ying Ting. She recently graduated from the National University of Singapore in sociology and English literature. Her field of study led her to recognize the importance of systems thinking. At present, she is the events and content executive working on the joint initiative of social systems innovation by NUS and the BOP hub. Now let's get started. I wish us all a wonderful learning experience for the next hour. Ying Ting, over to you, please. Hello, everyone. Give me a minute. Let me just share my screen. Can everyone see this? Yes. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Barbara, for the introduction and for having us. We will start today's session with a general introduction of the iceberg model by Liu Yin, and then we will go into a group exercise to apply the iceberg model in a canvas to build a better understanding of what is happening around our food system. And at the end of the workshop, we'll have some time to ask questions and to reflect on this journey together. So now I will invite my colleague Liu Yen to introduce the iceberg model to you. Hi everyone. It's my great honor to be here. 
Um, in 2013, while living in China, I was approached by a team of young professionals uh, from the Netherlands. They told me that they um, experienced a lot of uh, food waste in their daily life, and then they're working on solutions to tackle this uh, societal issue. So they would like to travel to China to get inspiration on how China is dealing with this issue. So I was asked to design and facilitate such a learning trip. Having lived in many different countries, I know very well that food wastage is a really serious global challenge. China is trying to tackle this problem as hard as any other country. As consumers, we just um, see our food in the trash and think nothing more of it. Scratch, it, scratch a surface, then you begin to realize not only one third of food produced worldwide is wasted. And there, were, there are wasted resources also, such as water, energy, that have been used in its production, harvesting, processing, delivery, and selling to the customers. If we waste one third of food produced globally, we also waste a quarter of our water supply worldwide. We have not even started to see the firsthand effects of 800 million people's starvation and malnourishment in many countries throughout the world. So in Netherlands, there are many, many amazing, innovative and smart designs to help consumers with um, uh, behavior change or turn foods uh, waste into reusable resources or new technology to reduce loss in certain areas of uh, food production or uh, food processing. However, I believe this is not enough. Dealing with the problem of food waste really, really need to come down to education, which helps to, help, uh, to drive this kind of transformation change in our value system, our mindset, and our mental model. As a part of um, their trip to China, I brought these uh, young Dutchies uh, to a primary school in Beijing uh, to visit their school canteen. We didn't tell them about our visits, uh, the purpose of our visits. But what we saw in the school uh, was truly astonishing. There were extraordinary amounts of study material or uh, education material about taking pride in frugality and preventing food, energy, and water wastage everywhere on the wall, in the classroom, in the assembly hall, in the school canteen. The students, even the kindergarten children, were so proud of their effort of finishing every grain of rice in their bowl. A little girl, no more than five years old, and she, she actually showed us her drawing to teach other kids the importance of preventing food wastage. When witnessing this, um, I realized how everyone, including myself, was brought up in China with a sense of appreciation and respect for food that were provided by so many people behind the scenes. There's this one simple um, poem that is taught to every kids during the first months in school, pretty much. It's called the Pe uh, Sympathy for the Peasants. Um, I think every Chinese can recite this poem. So I'm gonna recite here in Chinese for you. Chu he ri dang hu, han di he xia tu. Indeed, every single grain was hard earned. And this poem has helped millions of children, generation after generation, establishing the connection between the food in their plates and the hard labor and devotion of the grower which is probably the oldest and widest spread farm to fork campaign on this planet. Everyone in the world, especially our children, need to understand what is the real cost of our food in the plate. 
what is its impact on our soil, our water, our forest, our ocean, and the livelihood and dignity of people who grow this food for us. So today we are going to use a system thinking uh, model called the iceberg model to build some understanding of our food system. Thanks to the movie Titanic, um, many people recognize that there's a large percentage of the iceberg that is invisible. What you see and experience really is just a tip of, a tip, a tip of the iceberg. So just like an iceberg, a large percentage of what is going on in our world is actually hidden from our view. The iceberg model really helps us understand what are the factors hidden beneath the water that is out of our sight and out of everybody's attention. So the canvas is uh, designed uh, to help you uh, start to map out the different levels of thinking uh, to the system you are dealing with. From the top layer, the level of uh, uh, observable events um, to the layer under the surface. First, the underlying patterns that generate these events, then the supporting structure, and ultimately the mental model of people and organization. Events and patterns show you what is really happening. The structures and mental models tell you why is it happening. So the event level is really the level uh, that we typically see, feel, hear, experience, what's happening right now in this world. It's something you see in the news, something you experience on the street. And so the, these are the kind of problems that we can observe um, that can oft, often be addressed with a very simple reaction. For instance, um, you can see we have put some post-its here. Panity for people who don't finish food in a lunch buffet. Or cleaning the wa plastic waste on the beach. Or giving the homeless a shelter. Or taking a painkiller to get rid of your headache and move on with your day. We're not saying you shouldn't do that. In fact, these actions are usually the immediate reaction we can do to prevent further damage or delay the problem to give us some more time to work on better solutions. However, the iceberg model pushes us not to assume that every issue can be solved or only be solved by simply treating the symptom or adjusting at the event level. So if we look below the individual event level, we ask ourselves, Really, what has been happening over time? What are the trends? Are there any, are, are they kind of events that have been happening many times in many places? For example, one third of food produced globally is wasted. And our ocean is full of plastic waste. And a headache after taking first painkiller, it comes back again next day and oh, gradually becomes even stronger. So observing patterns allow us to forecast and forestall events so that we are better prepared. For example, we can take action on adapting to climate change or global pandemic or natural disasters. They're also the clue for understanding the system structures that are behind those patterns. So below the pattern level lies the structure level. We will ask, what is actually causing the pattern we're observing? What are the connections between these patterns? The answer is usually some kind of structure, such as something physical. For example, headache can be caused by um, uh, your, your lockdown at home. Um, you can only work from home, which makes you uh, feel isolated and lonely. Or by, or by organization, like a company is experiencing difficulty in business or even bankruptcy, which causes stress among its employee. Or the policy or regulation, such as a, a new retirement uh, policy or employment policy introduced by the government, 
which might disrupt your career plan, or the habitual behaviors so ingrained in your daily life you're not even conscious of. For example, having Zoom call every day till the midnight, which I probably some of you um, could recognize. So in the case of uh, food waste, it could also be uh, caused by no customized portion in the restaurant menu or retailer incentive um, that leads to irrational overpurchase or trade policy that keep the food price extremely low or simply lack of knowledge how to prepare food really properly. So all of this understanding will be an important foundation for a design challenge so that we can improve our infrastructure, facilities, technologies, policies, and daily behaviors. And then ultimately, the level at the bottom is the mental model level, which is something a lot of people would ignore or find it very hard to address. These are the deeply held assumptions beliefs, values, morals, attitude, expectations, perceptions, or even culture that drives our behavior. And build this structure in the first place and keep them functioning as they are. And we often absorb and establish these uh, mental models subconsciously from our society, religion, family, we're most of the time not even aware of it. There are thoughts and reasoning that causes the structure to be the way it is and exist in the mind of all the structure stakeholders. They're very difficult to identify and usually never made explicit. Mental model that causes us headache could be our belief that Korea is the most important part of our identity more important than our own health. It could also be, we can only enjoy a good lifestyle and provide for our family by working extremely hard. We cannot afford to rest and relax. Complaining is, is for losers. In this case of food waste, it could also be, you shouldn't force yourself to eat food that, that you don't like and just throw it away and get a new one. Or eating leftovers is unhealthy or nothing wrong with throw away cheap uh, bread because it's so cheap. And this also could be in the restaurant, it's, parents, uh, it's very embarrassing to take leftover home at the, um, 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 in the doggy bag. Or restaurant owner might even believe the customers are can only satisfied with their service with a bigger portion. So the change in mental model and mindsets is a transformational change. What we have experienced in the primary school in Beijing is exactly the kind of change to teach children these important values from a very young age, both in, both in school, in society, and at home. So as you can see, by looking beyond immediate events, you are able to find a, a root cause of a problem you now have much more leverage for solving problem and identify the best solution to address the problem at its roots, instead of taking a painkiller solution that lacks of sustainable impact. So now I would like to invite my colleague Ying Ting to join me to guide you through this exercise of uh, iceberg model canvas. Thank you, Liu Yin. So now we'll be moving on to the exercise segment. And I invite all of you to apply what we have learned. So in this slide, please uh, pick a recent event that makes you feel emotions. What makes you concerned, worried, or even angry? And this is something related to the food system. And to provide some understanding, the food system means the entire web of activities involving food production, processing, transport, and consumption. And this also includes governance and economics of food, how it affects the environment and people's health. So now I invite you to share with us via the chat function and my colleagues will swiftly copy over your responses on the canvas on, on the screen. It'll take about five minutes.
yeah, I see people um, concerned about use of plastic packaging. Indeed, it's a very serious problem. Unfair payment to the farmers, absolutely. Food dumped by supermarkets. Yes, there is a lot of surplus food. And small fire in Australia, oil spill in Russia. How is this anything to do with the food system? Waste of bread, yes. Used too much water in production, exactly. The, the watering uh, has not been, I think there is a lot of um, space we can actually improve how to water our uh, crops. Yeah, I think there are many students who so we'll say we have a lot of food wastage in the cafeteria um, and only family size packaging of vegetable, yes. Intensive animal protein, cheap food, yes, exactly. Order more food than you need in all scenarios. Yes, we were locked down at home. We were feeling very insecure. We kind of buy a lot of food and order a lot of food just to make us feel a little bit better. Food waste at wedding, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and actually uh, in China, uh, food waste uh, caused by corruption was a very, very big problem. Throwing away food instead of donating food, yeah. Festival local food. I see people started to actually put ideas. That's very good also. Uh, here we're focusing on talking about certain things that really concerns you, that, that you really want to make change about. And uh, so I see already a lot of uh, sticky notes here. Maybe our colleague can help us to um, uh, categorize them. Then we can ask um, uh, our participants, some of the participants to share. Mm. Current marketing costs people overeat lead to obesity. Yes. Food filled with chemical and pesticide, which are not visible to the eye. Yeah. Food delivery. Yeah. Plastic packaging, yeah, that's a serious problem. Regulation that do not allow supermarket to donate food. Yeah, that's a, that's a very interesting one, definitely. Too many middlemen on food supplies and farmers are not earn the wages they deserve. Maybe I can um, invite um, Grisella Arbino. Is it possible to unmute yourself and share what you have written here about too many middlemen and food supply and farmers are not earning the wages they deserve? Grisela Abino? Yeah, I can't hear. Rejection because of ugliness. Yeah, ugly food is, um, is a big issue. We only want to buy pretty ones, don't we? Meats and dairy industry lobbying against alternatives. Yeah, that's definitely happening. The culture that because it's cheap food can be thrown away without consequence. Yeah. Yeah, I see um, really there's I think we're, we all have a, our first-hand experience with food. And um, um, uh, I personally feel there are so many problems in the food system that uh, we can spend uh, probably um, uh, our generation to, to work on all these problems. So maybe um, um, in team, we can move on to the next uh, layer. Wow, thank you so much for the enthusiastic response. So let's move on to the next uh, level. Okay, so the next level is the patterns. So one question we will ask ourselves here is, is this a single event? What has been happening over time and what are the trends? So what are the patterns that allow us to forecast and forestall events? So here I invite you to take five minutes to share your thoughts in the chat function and my colleagues will do the same to copy over responses. Thank you so much for your enthusiasm.
consumerism. Yeah. The, for the sake of convenience, um, food package has been, um, yeah, the, the plastic packaging has been a real problem. Yeah, people are um, becoming, uh, the obesity uh, in developed country are becoming a really serious issue indeed. Overweight, moving from eating meat to vegetarian, that is definitely a trend, yeah. And so what we're, um, again, we're sharing something that we see uh, that is really concerning us. So I think uh, that's not something that I would feel concerned. I would feel this is a really good way to, um, uh, for our food system. Population, yeah, definitely predict to have uh, obese people. Lovely. Big consumption of processed food. Too many packaging material can't be recycled. Yeah, I think um, a lot of people are very concerned about food packaging. People are not interested and don't ask themselves the original of their food. Yeah, this is a really, um, I find it really a serious problem. Our children really lose connection with the food. And, and, and uh, you know, they really think uh, the, all the vegetable and broccoli come from supermarket. And food need to need not to be exported. Yeah, I see people already sharing solutions and opinions. So let's stick to the, the facts. Let's stick to what's really happening. Um, what you see is happening again and again, almost becomes a pattern, repetitive pattern and, and trends. So um, for example, the convenience culture, definitely it is, um, it is um, a, a trend and people just go for convenience, whatever, and fast food and, and they don't want to cook and they always deliver, uh, order delivery and processed food as well. Yeah. And wanting everything fast, easy, cheap. Yeah, I see people are really addressing this issue. And thinking farmers doesn't deserve a high pay. I think this is uh, probably something we'll, uh, we'll explore further in, the, um, further in the, uh, uh, the mental model. Yeah. Quantity over quality consumerism. Yeah, that's the same, same kind of message. Prioritization of company profits, yes. Profit driven. Bio that travels many kilometers. This is a good one. <laughs> yeah. Eating exotic stuff all year long, no matter this uh, about this. Yeah, exactly. We wanted to have accessibility to all kinds of food uh, around the world, right? Climate change affecting crops growth, which is affecting prices. Yeah. Can I invite somebody to share um, about the bio uh, traveling very, very far? Can we actually unmute ourselves and share? Is that, is that possible? Uh, no, Luan, actually it's only possible if you unmute people. So the general setting is that people can't talk because there are just too many in the room right now. Okay, <laughs> got it. All right, then uh, we just have to use this chat function as uh, much as possible. Yeah, okay. Mm, yeah, yeah. I see people already start to analyze um, why is this happening. So this is something we're gonna explore um, uh, at, uh, at the structure and mental level. Greenwashing, yeah. Fast food chain have advertisement on TV, which encourage young people to eat here. Yes, of course. They are the main audience, right? Healthier foods are, is more expensive. Yeah, it is, it, it, is, it, is it true?
food desserts in poorer neighborhood. Supermarket that have all the products, more visited than small shops. Yeah. So yeah, I see uh, we have such a um, variety of um, um, patterns, canned food, buy more than necessary, plastic, yeah, people lazy, globalized economy, single use plastic, not knowing what type of diet we really need to stay healthy, yeah, lack of knowledge about seasonal vegetable. Yeah. Okay, maybe we can move on to the, the next level. Wow, another round of enthusiastic responses. Thank you so much. So now we move on to the next level, the structure. So the third level, right? So moving on to the structures, we hope that you think along the lines of what is causing the pattern that we're observing and what are the connections between these patterns? So what are the structures that hold these patterns together? So think along the lines of, you know, some examples that include something physical, an object, a building, a road, the interior design, or even sound, noises, or air. And it can also be organizations, family, community, the government, and also the law and regulations, policies, or rules of the school. So it can also be a ritual or habit that you, that you do all the time without realizing. So now we invite you again to share your answers in the chat box. Thank you. Globalization, the big one. Yeah, industrial agriculture versus traditional aquaculture. Fast food advertising. Relax environments regulation. Hmm. It's a pity that I can't invite you to share what you mean. Some, some of the comments are very very deep and I really want to know more about it. Climate not in conducive to year road to production. Free market rules. Yeah, that's quite similar to the globalization part. Lack of national identity, interesting. Mass production from farm to food processing to distribution. Overregulation of size and aspect of fruits and vegetables. Yeah. Poverty, because poor people usually don't think about recycling as their primary needs, are not satisfied. Lack of environmental laws prevents large business exploiting the environment, the depleting biodiversity for mass crops. Big campaigns of publicity of trash food. Market economy based on capitalism. No policy regarding small producers, only big ones receive government help. Hmm. Agriculture, traditional agriculture wouldn't help as much as industrial agriculture. We need a regenerative agriculture. Yeah, I see people really um, have a lot of ideas around it. Um, so we are still in the stage of um, analyzing and try to understand the problem. So try not to jump too quick um, on, on solution. And so, um, so some of the solutions are very, very good, and, um, but we're not that y there yet. So take really time and have a patience to really dive very deep to understand the problem cultural norms relating to food and how much to offer guests. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, the cultural norm might um, uh, be part of our mental model. Yeah. So lack of storage facility along the way between farmers and final consumer in adequacy of transport and be to waste. Absolutely, yeah. Actually, um, when we talk about food waste, our, a lot of attention goes into consumer and, and uh, restaurants and, and retail. 
Um, actually, there are so much food waste uh, happening uh, during the transportation and processing and storage. Yeah, I think Yingting, we're, we're, we're full already and can we also move on? <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Thank you so much. My colleagues are, you know, <laughs> Yeah, they are on their toes, you know, copying over your responses. Thank you so much. So, um, in any case, if you have, you know, any elaborations because uh, of the Zoom uh, restriction and you feel like you want to, you know, elaborate more on your answers, please feel free to share on the chat function and um, perhaps Luyan can read out your elaborations so that, you know, it can still reach us. Thank you so much. So, uh, we move on to the next, uh, the final level. Okay, so this is the mental model. So, previously you saw... Um, uh, previously you saw you know things that are tangible things that you can see but the mental model is something subconscious so it can be understood as assumptions beliefs values uh, morals attitudes expectations you know viewpoints or culture of the individual organization society or the country and it is this that form and builds the structures that keep them functioning as they are and our mental models are often subconsciously inherited from our tradition from our legacies, from the environment that you know, we function in, in school, our workplace, society, our religious communities. And many of us um, don't realize that we actually inherit these mental models. So again, let's do this again. So take, please take five minutes to share some examples that come to your mind and uh, we will share them later. Yeah, I love this one. Tech will save us. <laughs> yeah. Um, telling people wasting food is normal. Colonial mentality that promotes more import of goods. Hmm. Social norms reminds me of paradigm of a broken window. That's very deep and profound. Throw away culture caused by a lack of understanding. Um, and uh, um, think, uh, see, think uh, farmer do not deserve a higher pay. Yeah, farmer deserve low income. Yeah, that's exactly, that's uh, really a problem. And the entire food value chain and the farmer actually earn the least. That's a real problem. Consumer habits in community, for example, the food of amount of food they usually consume daily. This is for me a much more of a structural problem. We're really talking about mental models. And mental models are things um, uh, that the, really the, the, the value and belief, and, and usually you don't even realize you have that kind of belief system. But it's really that kind of perception and culture that really impact you and, and drive your behaviors. Greediness. <laughs> Food is comforting, so eat more. Um, yeah, that, I think this is a very valid uh, point. Yeah, the more the better. Yeah, concentrate on appearance and not going deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, food advertisement um, is, um, for me, is um, uh, either a, a trend, uh, a pattern, or a structure. So we're really talking about what people believe and, and their assumption about things. We don't think seriously what, what, uh, that we are what we eat. Yeah. Believe the expired dates of the food. And this is really more like, um, yeah, we, we kind of blindly trust what has been put on the packaging. Our high heritage from parents and grandparents who haven't had enough food during after war, the more better keep it in stock. Yeah, this is a really good one. This is a typical one. And um, I think it's almost like trans culture. <laughs> and then 
And if our grandparents or grandparents are experiencing famine or war, they really have a very different kind of attitude towards food. And they, you kind of impact it by their way of, you know, dealing with food and, and, and so, so without even realizing it. Mm, yeah, so um, I see a person actually uh, asked a question, Shuhada asked a question. Um, she found it very difficult to, uh, to differ between underlying structure and, uh, um, and the mental model. Structure, I mean, in the simple terms, structure is um, more like an externality. You can experience it as like environment, like infrastructure, like what's happening, like uh, the physical space and rules and regulations. And these are kind of um, what we are experiencing. Um, it's, a, it's a kind of um, um, norm in our society. But mental model is really happening inside your, your, your head. It's not only an individual, but it could be also a, a mental model of our organization. A mental model of a society and our belief system, our value system. Oh, the question is from Emma, sorry. <laughs> okay. Perception of food and role it plays in producing a healthy mind and body or lack of, okay, great. So Yinting, I think we have uh, a lot of um, uh, contribution and maybe we can, we can address some of the questions. Yes, okay. There any questions that you'd like to take up, Yuyan? Yeah, um, I think we can open for uh, for questions. I see some questions, and because there's so the chat is moving so fast, and it's very hard to to catch those questions. Um, yeah, I kindly invite uh, um, the panelists um, to share their question here. If I haven't really mm -hmm. seen your question, please share again. Is ignorance also a mental model? That's a very good one. Yeah, ignorance is a mental model. I think it could be it could, could be a mental model, but it could be also a behavior. I mean, and, and, and it's it's a it's a space we can all explore. And some I think sometimes we choose um, to ignore, or sometimes we ignore just as a default behavior. Don't we not even think? If you, uh, I mean, uh, I encourage participants if you think differently, um, um, please do share your comments and reflections at the chat. Hmm. Yeah, Lais said, uh, I agree, ignorance is, is easier because you allow yourself not to do anything. How about bias? Can we put them in the, in the mental model? Yes, I think um, um, that's um, what we actually put there. And the, um, the mo mental model is really about our assumption. And uh, everybody has assumption because our worldview is very limited. Um, and our worldview is shaped by the environment we're in. So uh, we all have bias and we all have some assumptions. Definitely it's a, it's a part of a mental model. Wow, so the, your responses are very enthusiastic once again. Thank you so much. And after we've answered some questions, perhaps I can invite Lian to do a recap on this model and then we can move on to the next segment as well, yes?
Yeah, I think some of the questions are very, very, very good. And, and I think we can continue this conversation for a very, very long time. And uh, uh, especially, uh, the, the, uh, I, I really find it very intriguing to, to discuss some, you know, whether some, some of, uh, especially um, when we are dealing with societal problems, and ignorance is, uh, is a big issue. And, uh, um, and many people ignore um, out of, like intentionally ignore. And some people ignore it, it becomes already a habitual behavior. Um, so, so yeah, so a bit of recap of um, the uh, iceberg model. And so we, we actually spoke about four layers and, and uh, the observable actions and phenomenon happening in, in our daily life. Um, uh, what we see and, and read and experience. And these are all kind of single events and, and, and these, which is like uh, visible, the tip of iceberg. But what have what we have not seen are the trends. What are the patterns of repetitive events are happening, and um, and what we have also not seen is the 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 entire the, the type of structure that really holds the pattern into place or create the pattern. And the mental model actually are the kind of um, um, uh, belief system of um, uh, the structure stakeholder that actually create this kind of structure, which leads to the pattern, which leads to the events. And so um, they, they, they actually keep the structure and pattern in place. And it's very difficult and if you, to change the structure if you don't really address the mental model of the structure of the stakeholders. So, so using the expert model, um, we are able to really think and, and ask the relationship about all the uh, components in the system. Um, and instead of just addressing one uh, symptom of the, uh, the events. So um, with that, I think I'm gonna actually hand over to Inting. Thank you. So uh, thank you all for your participation once again. So we had a question actually asked, uh, so what program are we using that allows us to copy over comments so quickly? So actually, I have four other colleagues with me here. So shout out to them for their amazing work. So they are the ones that have really fast fingers that are copying over your, uh, your uh, responses onto the screen, So which is why you can see it so quickly. So now uh, let me move on to the next segment. I hope to invite you to join us on uh, Mentimeter. Okay, so I'll just flash this. Uh, please join us on, on Mentimeter. Just copy in the code and then we will see the questions on the, on the screen, yes. Okay. Slowing down, go deeper, reflect. Yes, indeed. Um, I see one of the comments um, saying, "What uh, can we actually talk about and how to change um, those problems? And can we actually talk about solutions? Um, I know um, that um, uh, people are probably much more excited um, to think about really how we actually gonna change all these problems. Um, but the system thinking uh, is a tool that really let us, instead of jumping directly on solution uh, mode, and take time and reflect and really see the entire picture of a system. And because what we believe is the right thing might not be the right thing after all. And so to, um, to really ask what's really happening, what is already holding the challenge in place, and what is already working, what is not working. And so what can we really learn? What resources are really available? And so all these um, different layers of thinking and reflecting help us to collect uh, all these answers so we can really address on the system level. Wow. Okay. Holistic relationship. Yeah, beautiful word. social structure.
slow analysis. I love that. <laughs> Patterns, yeah, critical thinking, yes. Critical thinking is so, so, so important because what you see is really just a small fraction of reality, which really teach us about um, empathy uh, in many ways. Wow. Yeah, so I think- uh, the next question. <laughs> yeah, Yingting, I think we can move on to the next wow. question. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, we are very heartened by all your responses. So hmm. next question. Just to, so, so that we can have an idea what you'll be applying the iceberg model to. Nice, mental health. Hmm. Yeah. Very important. Hmm social inequality, food waste, human wildlife interaction. Absolutely, yeah. Project management, absolutely, yes. Policy making, yes, absolutely. Yeah, racial injustice, climate change, absolutely. Ugly food remains a, a really big one. Education, gender inequality. Wow, ugly food remains a really big one. <laughs> Engineering. Wow, this is amazing. Wow. Yeah, you know, I uh, have one more minute for this so I can uh, pass the time back to Barbara to wrap up as well. Wow, yeah. You guys are amazing audiences. Thank you so much. <laughs> Women's rights. <laughs> relationship, yeah, relationship, definitely. Yeah, relationship is really big, big thing. Hidden agendas. <laughs> Health, health issue. Great. I think women's rights remains as a big one. Maybe we'll take one last, uh, last 30 seconds. Thank you so much. I see people typing Chinese. Violence against women. No. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for your enthusiastic participation once again. And we really hope that the iceberg model will be useful for you as you tackle larger problems in the future. And that now you're one skill stronger in to make some real impact and change in the world. So now I'll pass the time back to Barbara. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. And I think if you stop sharing right now, we should be able to see at least a few of our participants in the room. And if you if you would like to, I, I want to invite you to really turn on your cameras because we were like kind of speaking to an anonymous group of people here. So if you want, please turn on your camera. It's so wonderful to see your faces. Yes, it is. And it was also amazing to see the Mentimeter. I really couldn't um, take my my eyes from it um, and I mean that's we, we really try to to make this an interactive workshop it's not easy with such a 
complex topic and with so many participants. Um, but I hope we, we managed to do so. And I want you to join me in a big thank you to Liu Yan and Ying Ting and the great team at um, National University of Singapore who was typing all the remarks and comments on the mirror board. And for this, I would like to, to ask you to use the chat room one more time today and please put your thank you in your language because I, this was also really amazing. We had people like from Brazil, China, India, Bangladesh, um, I don't know, all Russia, European South countries. Africa, <laughs> yes. So, wow. This is so amazing. Wow. Thank you all so much for your participation here. Um, I hope you take the chance to, to check out some more of um, the sessions at the festival. And yeah, we are all in this together and um, jointly we can work to advance the SDGs and um, contribute to, to saving the planet. Thank you so much. 谢谢，谢谢大家。